Okay, so first we're going to measure the size of this gap using parametric methods, um, which means we're just going to run a regression model to measure the size of that gap. Um, so we're going to come here to step five. Um, we'll do a subheading here called parametric stuff and spell it correctly, metric stuff. Okay, so we're going to insert a new chunk here. So the way parametric um, gap measuring works is um, the easiest way is to actually center our running variable around the cutoff so that instead of having um, the main running variable be ranging from like 30 to 100 it's going to um, uh, 0 is going to be the cutoff and then if it's 10 that's going to be 80 and if it's 60 or if it's negative 10 that's going to be 60. Um, so we need to make a new version of our data set we'll call this tutoring centered and we're going to set this equal to tutoring but we're going to add a new column so we're going to say mutate um, in our new column we're going to call this exam or entrance centered so to make a new column to center this we're going to take the existing exam column which is called entrance underscore exam so equals entrance underscore exam minus 70 because that's our cutoff so if i hit play here now i have two data sets i have one called tutoring with a thousand rows in it with four observations and then one with five observations or five variables so if i click on that here's our tutoring centered data set still has the same columns but now we have entrance centered which shows how many points people scored above or below our threshold so this person scored 22 points above the threshold which makes sense that's 92. This person um, scored basically two points under the threshold, 68, makes sense. So we can see kind of who scored plus or minus um, around that cutoff. So with that centered variable now, we can run a regression model to measure the gap there. Because now when we're centering, our y-axis is going to be the centered line, not the y-intercept way down where entrance exam is zero. So to do that, we'll just insert a new chunk here. And we'll call this model simple. And we just use a regular old linear model function here. Our outcome was exit underscore exam, spelled correctly. So exit exam is explained by, um, then we want entrance centered plus tutoring because I think that, is that the name of the column? Yep. So we want our centered entrance column and we want our tutoring column. So if we just include those two variables there, we can do comma data equals tutoring centered because that's the data set that has our entrance centered column in it. And so if I run it, it should run the regression, but we want to actually see what it did. So we can use the tidy function to say model simple so now if I run it, there we go. Um, so we can interpret all three of these coefficients here. So 59 is the intercept, which means this is basically where um, entrance centered is zero. So that means at 70 and where tutoring is false. So people who did not get tutoring and scored exactly 70 or right at the cutoff, their average exit score is 59. And if we look up at our picture, um, that's going to be this red line right there. So right about at 59, that's going to the coefficient that we're seeing in the model is that point right there. Um, this next coefficient means every time you go up one value in the entrance in the entrance test above 70, so moving from 70 to 71, um, will boost your final score by half a point. And then 71 to 72, also half a point. That's just the slope of that line. That's less important for this situation. We don't care how steep that is. Um, what we care about the most is the jump that happens when tutoring is turned on. That's the switch that we have here. So here, this is saying when tutoring is on, that whole line shifts up by 10.9 points or 11 points up. So that is the size of the gap, moving from this red line at the bottom here up to this teal line here. That gap right there is 11 points. Um, and there we go. So that is our causal effect. But it's not quite accurate because 
we did not use any bandwidths. Like we're using the full data here. This line that we drew includes people who scored 30. This line includes people who scored 100. What we really want is to kind of narrow that down and look just at the bandwidth, like plus or minus 10 or plus or minus five around um, that cutoff there. And we wanna draw lines within that bandwidth and then measure the gap. Um, so to do that, let's go ahead and copy this code here from um, this main plot showing the gap but we want to use a bandwidth this time. So I'm just gonna copy this code, come down here after the simple model, paste it, and we're gonna change something here. Um, so rather than draw this line, right now we have two geom smooths, um, but we're saying, um, look at data that goes, that is less than 70, and look at data that is more than 70. Um, what we really want to do is look at data that is less than 70, but also more than 60, um, because that's our bandwidth there. Um, if we have a bandwidth of 10, plus or minus 10. So what we can do is modify this filter here and add another condition. So I can hit enter here to give it a little bit more space. So we want entrance exam less than or equal to 70, and also entrance exam greater than or equal to 70, or 60. So that'll be our, our lower um, kind of the left side of the cutoff point. And if we come here and do the same thing with the other side of the cutoff point, we can say entrance exam is greater than 70 and also entrance exam is less than or equal to 80. So now if we plot this, we should get two lines, but those two lines now are very narrow because we're ignoring all of these points. We're ignoring all of those points. We're only looking at this narrower bandwidth between 60 and 80. So plus or minus 10 around the cutoff. And the gap now might not be 11 as was what we found before. And so just looking at this, it looks like that is probably exactly 60-ish. And now this is a little bit less than 70. So I'm guessing that the gap now is like nine point something instead of 11. So our gap shrunk a little bit because we're only looking at some parts of the data. So we can measure that exact gap now um, using the same um, regression model, but we just add the bandwidth to this regression model. So I'm gonna copy the code for model simple and come down and add a new chunk, paste it here. But we're gonna rename this from model simple to model underscore BW10. So with a bandwidth of 10. Um, we still want exit exam explained by entrance centered and tutoring, because that's what's gonna give us the coefficients we care about to measure that gap. But the data now, rather than looking at just tutoring centered, we want to look at a filtered version of that to get rid of some of the points that are outside of the bandwidth. So I'm going to replace this with filter, and we're gonna filter tutoring centered. And we're going to filter it by saying our entrance variable, entrance centered is um, less, than, less than or equal to 10, because we want it basically from 80 down. We could also, instead of saying entrance centered, we could just say entrance exam and then use 80 and 60. Um, because we're using the centered one, then we're just talking about plus or minus 10 around the centered, either one would work. So we want entrance centered less than 10. Um, and we also want entrance centered to be greater than or equal to negative 10. So what this will do is it'll throw away all of the data except the points that are within the negative 10 to 10 range around our cutoff. So now if I run this model and show it, if I ran this, it would just show the old model. We don't want that. We want model underscore BW10, underscore BW10. Our gap now is 9.8. Cool. Um, so our intercept there is 60, meaning that red line is starting at 60.1. Um, the slope we don't really care about. That's just saying that as you increase your entrance score by one point, your exit score goes up by 0.43. Um, but then we have our tutoring effect. So this is the, the shift in the intercept that happens because of tutoring. Um, 
and now it's 9.8 instead of what we found before, which was like 11. So our causal effect shrunk because we shrunk the bandwidth. Um, we can shrink the bandwidth even more. We can shrink it down to like five instead of 10. So we can just copy the same model code. Um, we can paste it inside a chunk here and we'll make another model called BW5 and we'll show BW5. So here we're just going to change it. So instead of looking at the entrance centered is less than 10, we want less than five and greater than negative five. So now if we run this, the gap is now 10.1. So shrinking it even more, it made the gap a little bit bigger. That's interesting. Um, we can actually plot both at the same time. Um, if we come back to this plot here and copy both of these geom smooths and add both of them back. But now we're going to say um, for this one, this is going to be less, uh, yeah, greater than 70 or less than 70, but greater than 65. And this is going to be greater than 70 because that's our cutoff, but less than 75. Um, so that gives us the five bandwidth. Had to think about that for a minute. So this is just going to show from 65 to 70 and then from 70 to 75. So if we plot that now, we should see a whole bunch of little lines there. Cool. So the shorter line that has the tiny bandwidth, it's kind of steeper and down. So that's why the gap got bigger. Um, up here, it's basically the same. So it's just a little bit steeper if you narrow that bandwidth. Um, but Generally, kind of our causal effect is between 9 and 11-ish, depending on the bandwidths that we throw at it. We can compare all three of those non-parametric or those parametric models if we use model summary. So we can say model summary and then feed it a list of those three models, which we named model simple. Yep. And then model underscore BW10 and model underscore BW5. So if we run this, it should show us all three at the same time. Um, so again, the way you read these, now each of the models are a column. And so this shows for model one, the intercept was 59. The slope that we don't care about is 0.5. This is the one we care about, this tutoring true. That's the tutoring coefficient. That's the effect of the program or the size of the gap. So if we don't have any bandwidth at all and just use the whole range of data, which is wrong, um, our causal effect is basically 11. If we have a bandwidth of 10, then the causal effect is 9.8. If we have a bandwidth of 5, then it's 10.1. So it's somewhere in this range. Um, if you're reporting this, you would say the causal effect is roughly 10-ish. Um, you wouldn't report like 9.8. Um, if you did that, you'd have to say using a bandwidth of 10, it is 9.8. Um, so this, this does show some robustness, like it's not changing from like nine to two, um, or going wildly all over the place as we are shrinking and growing the bandwidth. So that's, that's a good sign that it's fairly robust. Um, but that's how you do this parametric, uh, regression discontinuity analysis using just regular linear models. So now you've done that.